What's up, Cinephiles? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we'll be talking about the Korean space action flick, Space Whippers, directed by Song Hee Jo, now streaming on Netflix. Before we continue with this review, why don't you guys show your support to the channel by hitting that like button and subscribing to us for weekly reviews of movies and TV shows. Phil, why don't you share to us what is this movie all about? Space Sweepers stars Song Joong Ki as Tae Ho, who K-drama fans know from Descendants of the Sun, so I'm sure a lot of fans are gonna watch this movie. It also stars Kim Terry as Captain Jang and Richard Armitage as James Sullivan. Now set in the year 2092, Earth has become uninhabitable. Fleeing the sick Earth, UTS Corporation builds a new orbiting home for humanity, but only a chosen few can ascend. After snatching a crash space shuttle in the latest debris chase, Spaceship Victory's crew members find a 7-year-old girl inside. They realize that she's the human-like robot wanted by UTS space guards and decide to demand ransom in exchange. Now that was a longer than usual synopsis because there is so much to unpack in this movie so much is going on. Kevin, let's start with you. So this movie is being helmed as the first Korean space action movie so right from the get-go on set you can feel that there's so many ideas here and they want to prove something here that they can produce something of a Hollywood quality level of movie. I'm going to say this movie is nothing different from what we've seen in the past. We have a lot of blue collar rogue action from Star Wars, Guardians of the Galaxy. Clearly the movie takes inspiration from that. There's a sense of multicultural facet in this movie that I've already seen in other movies you know and also in Star Wars in general but in those movies Asian characters mostly are related to supporting performances or sometimes sea level characters, background characters so in here, it's refreshing to see them taking the spotlight with the Western characters playing second fiddle to them. So there's a part of an appeal to that. And also at the beginning of the film, they have this audio piece that they can speak freely in their native language without any obstructions. But yeah, we have here a ragtag group of scumbugs. They're untrustworthy and unlikable characters. And in here, they will be humanized by this latest addition to the group, which is Dorothy. Relationships will be forged and you can see the dynamic and banter among these characters that is in itself a space adventure among the crew also we have here a story of a utopian society the movie poses in the beginning that there's a divide between the citizens and non-citizens you know in these future scenarios earth is always destroyed and earth is always inhabitable so we literally have here a flat earth version looming in the space we have a lot of big concepts and it's really hard to marry these concepts together and make them flow in a more seamless narrative. Guardians of the Galaxy has done it in a lot of space sci-fi shows. I think it's fair to say that director Song Hee Jo here is just new to the ground and for the most part he struggled marrying this big ideas because you can feel that this movie has two different movies inside and just because the character of Richard Armitage here is just so detached in the movie for most <laughs> of the part it kind of disrupts the tone by the middle of the film you're asking yourself this movie can seem to focus or commit to either of the narratives because that class divide that they have introduced early on there's a good exploration here a la snowpiercer like examining the haves and have nots the movie never went by past its expository stage i felt like that it's a missed opportunity here but you know before i indulge myself with the <laughs> parts of this movie that i did not like i would also have to commend the action sequences i found them strong in the first and last 30 minutes the visual effects are great the production design is great actually i had a blast with this movie but not exactly for all the right reasons which i'm going to discuss a little bit later because i really had a ton of laughs with this this ragtag group of space sweepers per se they are fun they are interesting characters you have this robot who's a former killing machine i guess a former gang leader a former terrorist is a former police officer so this movie has that going for it and also Dorothy even though we've seen this plot thread like a hundred times probably in sci-fi action adventure movies you will still have fun with it the action sequences you mentioned they're bombastic even though it can get a little bit messy at times the performances of the main cast for me is great but some of the side characters it's quite a mixed bag for me after watching this movie actually the first thing that I did is look if this was an original story or 
sure if this was based upon a novel or a comic probably. And surprisingly, it's an originally written story and world. I just really thought that there are so many ideas that they tried to cram in this quite overly long movie that I kind of felt that this should have been a TV show. They keep introducing new world building elements, new plot thread, new characters. If this was a TV show, this would have been awesome. They would really have time to introduce this world to us, which for me is quite interesting really. You mentioned the multicultural dynamic here. Somebody spoke in Filipino, some speaking in other languages, which is awesome. But unfortunately, it's not. It's a movie and it tends to become too overlong because there is so much going on. Everything is also so, so cliche. Don't get me wrong. It's fun because I think that, that the cliche element they did all throughout the movie was at least done well and entertaining so that viewers can really have a blast with this movie. But because there are so many ideas, there are so many characters, not all of them was developed particularly well. It kind of became tedious to watch towards the end there because you're just asking yourself, how long is this movie gonna keep going? And I also want to talk about the main villain here. Best part of this movie for me for all the wrong reasons. It's just so funny. <laughs> that villain is so cliche. He's just this really old, 152 years old, I think, corporate guy probably doing some de-aging who has a god complex. Yeah, about that villain, Richard Armitage. Man, uh, let's just <laughs> say that this role did not really do him any favor. There's an interesting <laughs> feature to his character, but they never really explained the physiology behind it. Every time the movie goes to his perspective, it feels like an entirely different movie. And then I just wish that this movie scaled back a bit. I think it mm -hmm. will still work as a movie, but you know, they need to really tear away some of the parts here because the problem with this movie is I felt like it's catering so much to an international audience that it starts casting some international supporting characters when some of these performances are below par, you know, <laughs> and it kind of suffered because they took away so much of the screen time from these actors. I haven't seen these actors yet, but something tells me that they've done better work outside mm -hmm. this movie. Also, when it comes to the character development, I was yearning for more because mm -hmm. you got their backstories along the way and somehow it felt staged and, you know, mechanical because we have have this obligatory flashback from a major character <laughs> and you can definitely feel the k-drama bits going uh, on there <laughs> it's hard it's a tough act because flashbacks when they take too long they can take away from the momentum of the story and you know uh, yeah. some of the action sequences while they are spectacular sometimes you kind of lost with your bearings on what's happening on where you are and also I found some of the abrupt editings here sometimes they say that the movie bites more than it can chew it will be harder to swallow and I think this is one of the cases where the director his song Hijo is so devoted on fleshing the different aspects of his movie, these concepts that the runtime already suffered and by the end of this journey, you are not as invested as you are initially. Looking at all the things that happen here actually is just more of a recreation of the space adventures that we've seen. And I'm fine with that derivative concept, you know, because we've seen movies time and then that has taken cool ideas from other movies and refashioned it to something gripping. In here, it just looks messy. It's like having a junkyard of ideas and thematically it feels dense. So initially the Korean stomp to their first space action flick kind of loses its identity because it kind of devolved into the serviceable space action adventures. It kind of felt that they were just ticking a lot of boxes along the way. You were just exhausted by the end of this movie. The pacing of this movie, it's all over the place, especially with those flashbacks. Also, whenever that they shift the scenes from these main characters that are South Korean towards these other characters which is led by the villain. It really feels like a different movie and particularly the performances in that scene there's this side character that's a reporter who is just in constant high gear with his performance. I didn't really particularly enjoy that character. One laugh out loud moment that I had is towards the end of this movie there's this really big moment and the villain had this voiceover which is just really funny for me. I was laughing my 
my heart out when he had that voiceover moment. All in all, I think that this is still a fun movie. I thought that if they would have turned this into a TV show, although that it may be a derivative, South Korean movies and TV shows are really well known in fleshing out characters and introducing a lot of interesting dynamics to the relationship of its characters that I think that this movie would have been a really really awesome South Korean TV show. Unfortunately, since it didn't, we were left into this jumbled mess of a movie but it's still fun and I think that this is also a big step forward in South Korean cinema and in result also Asian cinema because of the production value, the special effects, the blockbuster quality of this movie and we only see movies with this scale in production coming from China and it's fun that we are also getting these kinds of movies now from South Korea. So all in all, I am going to give this movie a 3 out of 5 stars. I think it's decent enough for a popcorn fanfare just because I have seen a lot of space shows and this one, it can't really decide what it wants to be until it's too late. So the movie really overstayed its welcome for me. I'm sure everyone involved in this project are proud of their work and rightfully so, but it takes restraint, you know, even in blockbusters, action like this to present something visually pleasing but at the same time narratively compelling so i'm going to give this movie a two and a half out of five stars and that's it for our review of space sweepers if you like this video don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel also let us know what you think in the comment sections down below thank you so much for watching until then see you on the next one bye bye